Many years ago, I thought I had a very fast car. That was until I encountered one of these. This is the Mazda RX-100. And uh, I used to race against these little cars because that was the kind of thing I'd like to do. And these would always blow the doors off of my car. Now what did it? It was one of these. It was the Wankel rotary engine. This one here is an example of a 13B Mazda Wankel. Absolutely fantastic little motors. Uh, not a lot of torque, but an enormous amount of horsepower. A very high revving engine. Um, very lightweight, for considering how much power they put out. Uh, very simple in design, very simple in the manufacturer. And Mazda has spent over 50 years now improving this machine until it is extremely good. They had problems with the vertex seals on the rotors, um, sealing in general, lots of little issues that they've managed to fix over the years. There's only one problem that they've not been able to fix, and that problem is gas mileage. The gas mileage of these machines is really poor. They only get about 50% the mileage of a standard internal combustion engine. So even though these are very exciting vehicles to own with a wonderful, wonderful little engine, it just doesn't get enough mileage. This kind of problem has been solved in the past. The way they did it with steam engines, which were horrendously inefficient, they were only about 6% efficient, they compounded the engine. So what they did is they extended the exhaust stroke of the machine. This reached the pinnacle with a gasoline engine in the early 50s, late 40s, early 50s. This was the Napier Nomad, which is a compounded uh, diesel engine used for aircraft. And uh, uses a standard, regular four-stroke engine that then pumps its exhaust through a turbine to re recover energy from the exhaust. The Napier Nomad never made it to production, but these did. This is the bright cyclone radial engines that were used for aircraft uh, all during the 50s until the jet engines took over. Now what these had was these gas turbines on the exhaust to recover energy from the exhaust. This is another one here. There's three mounted on and directly coupled to the crankshaft for recovery of power. Here's a cutaway view of one. Shows you the simplicity of the idea, but a very complex actual design. When it actually comes to actually building it, it uh, takes exotic materials because the very high exhaust temperatures are much higher than uh, most materials can stand. And the materials that they manufacture these things out of are actually very difficult and expensive to machine. They're much cheaper nowadays because um, the technology that is used to do design and develop and build turbochargers is there. But they still would be probably more expensive to build one of those than to build the entire Wankel engine. My idea is to go back to the way that the piston engine from the steam engine used to do this. And that's by having an extended exhaust stroke by adding another compounding rotor to the master rotary engine. And this compounding rotor, as you see there, would be twice the weight, so it would stay in balance and between the two power rotors. This is a glass view of it in operation, so you could see how it would be designed. And here we're coming up onto the intake side. So it intakes in, goes through the normal rotary cycle, and uh, then it gets exhausted, crosses over, and goes down to the bottom of the center rotor, the compounding rotor, and then the exhaust comes out on this side. The way to do this is to redesign the timing of this machine, and the way the timing is done is through the use of the irons. Now this is one of the irons here, so we can look through and see how this is done. The intake comes in through the bottom port, then goes through the standard rotary cycle. The exhaust comes from the top and then crosses over to the other side. So you see this crossover comes down to the bottom 
Then it goes through the extra expansion cycle of the compounding rotor, and then it is exhausted through the port in the other iron. Here's another cutaway view, a glass view of this engine. And in this, this uh, video here, we actually go in through the inlet port into the ro rotor housing, follow the cycle around, and we end up in the exhaust rotor. There should be lots of benefits to this engine, better mileage, less emissions, more free horsepower, a great increase in torque, and a very small increase in the actual cost of production. It will most likely take a larger radiator because there will be a higher heat load. There might be a problem with the recycling of exhaust gases, so it might be more difficult to start, and it's a little heavier. But where I can really see this big benefit is in the aviation industry, where it would be a machine that would be halfway in between the standard uh, engine, the uh, four-stroke engine, and a turbine.